This major nor'easter is racing up the coastline here with major impacts expected through the northeast into our Monday. Rain, wind, storms, and even snow possible. I've got the details on that. The brief cold snap coming behind it. Plus, at the end, a chance of snow by Christmas. Details on your white Christmas forecast and the latest on that coming up. Good Sunday evening to you. Hope you've had a great weekend. Now, here are alerts as of this evening. We've got some severe weather alerts here into parts of eastern North Carolina, including a tornado watch. Um, that's going to be ending here, but we've got flash flood watches all the way up the coastline here through the mid-Atlantic into parts of New York, Massachusetts, surrounding areas. High wind warnings across portions of the Long Island shores, southern Connecticut, Rhode Island, um, through Cape Cod, as well as along that New England shoreline. We've got those high wind alerts. We've also got wind alerts and winter weather alerts here wrapping back around and coming off the Great lakes and into Appalachia with some snowfall that's going to kind of wrap back around the system. Now your flood risk through Monday morning with severe weather also possible in eastern North Carolina and eastern Virginia. It's level two all the way on up the coastline and in parts of western Massachusetts, southern New York. So let's go ahead and get right into that timing here with your future radar. You can see the low pressure as of this evening stationed over parts of northeastern South Carolina right along the shores. There's some very heavy rainfall, even a flash flood emergency along the South Carolina shores um, this afternoon. We've still got the risk for some embedded tornadoes in some of these cells as they put on shore through the evening hours, but I do think that's going to be kind of transitioning on over a little bit more towards a damaging wind potential, and really just a lot of the sites as well going on this heavy rainfall here over parts of Virginia, um, parts of the Washington, D.C. region, as well as eastern um, West Virginia getting in on these very heavy downpours on the northern edge of this. Here we go towards 11 p.m. eastern time this evening. Again, the outer bank still getting lashed by some repetitive bands. These could also cause some flooding here and a very quick, you know, amount of rainfall of maybe three to six inches um, still possible in some of these cells as they work south to north along the coastline in that repetitive fashion. Um, and with the low pressure energy kind of just feeding right off the Atlantic here, that's what makes nor'easters so powerful. That rainfall really just jetting on in and a lot of heavy rainfall into parts of Washington, D.C. as well as Baltimore there and that region. Now continuing to play this on out from there, you can see this is going to begin to bring that southerly flow on up into Long Island here through the rest of the evening. We've got very heavy downpours pushing through there, so all the way on to the eastern shores of Long Island through Islip, these areas in New York, very heavy rain, um, so you get the point, very heavy rain, right? And this is just going to be a big mass of flooding concerns here into our 4 a.m. time frame on your Monday. It's going to be very wet still on the roads, even if it's not pouring quite as hard as it does tonight, tomorrow morning. Any Monday morning commute is just going to be disrupted, especially into parts of Massachusetts. Massachusetts, central and northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, the the main shoreline here into our Monday morning. That's where it's still going to be pouring down rain even as commute begins. Even as far south as New York City, though, still ponding, dangerous flooding, and you know maybe creeks coming out of their banks and rivers as well, causing problems there. Um, you can see some very heavy rains pushing on shore there along that main shore around 10 a.m. This is in addition to some 50 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts that could also be moving through. Eventually, though, as we make our way into our afternoon hours here on your Monday, that's that's when we begin to kind of see this slowly work on out, but still some of these leftover pockets could be dumping some half an inch per hour rainfall rates enough to just cause some lingering issues there. Um, but again, the flood risk through our Sunday is really kind, kind of confined here to New England um, more, which is good as the system begins to kind of push away. Now, in terms of our rainfall totals here, by the way, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. In terms of our rainfall totals here, this red stripe right along the coastline, that's where we're expecting anywhere from around, say, two to four inches of rainfall. But embedded in this, I can guarantee you, especially in this zone that I'm circling right here from parts of Virginia on up through southern New York, I would an ex anticipate some half-foot rainfall totals to get in the mix in a few of these locations here. That's that's certainly enough to cause some significant flash flooding, um, rivers coming out of their banks, some cre some coastal flooding as well, um, and then, you know, from the from the waves. But then we've also got some of these totals that could be four to six inches as well into parts of New York, stretching on all the way on up through Maine. So this system just continues to dump powerful um, heavy rainfall along with the gusty winds as it makes its way on off in that direction. Now the next thing I kind of want to turn our attention to is the wind gusts that we're going to be getting with this system. HRRR model has its sights on some 50, 60 mile per hour gusts through the rest of this evening. They're really going to remain offshore for the most part here. Again, as this is a coastal low, also known as a nor'easter, just because the winds hitting the east coast come off the northeast direction. Um, some gusts maybe pulling into this low pressure system through central South Carolina and North Carolina could be near 30 to 40, but it's really going to be in this zone I just circled. That's where the high wind warnings are. That's where we're going to watch for the southerly flow here on the eastern side of this system to really pull on in um, and just bring some extremely high wind gusts here. In fact, this is uh, it could end up being an overachiever in comparison to the last winter storm. With that, the wind gust potential kind of downgraded as we got closer. This time, it's going up, and we're looking at the potential for several hours of 40-plus mile per hour gusts and at least a few hours of some 60 to 80 mile per hour gusts that are going to move in on the day on Monday. 
So again, these winds kind of getting some of that southerly moisture and eventually kind of turning coming in out of the east. But overall here, you can see how some of these gusts pick up to around anywhere to 60 to 70 miles per hour. Though In these white colors, that's where you're looking at some 70 mile per hour gusts being possible here. Will we see some hurricane force gusts touch the eastern shores of Long Island, parts of Connecticut, parts of Rhode Island, as well as maybe even into Boston and Cape Cod? Yes, some 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts possible in the morning hours here of our Monday. Some of these gusts pushing 50, 60 as well in southern Maine by that point. But also notice, don't want to leave you out there with that, that northern westerly flow kind of wrapping back around the system there in Appalachia and into Washington, D.C. Still some 40 mile per hour gusts at that point. Um, but this is, again, main, main, the main focus zone here as we make our way throughout the afternoon hours of our Monday through Augusta, Maine, through Bangor, right along the coastline Bar Harbor. I wouldn't be shocked if we briefly saw kind of a maximum gust there of around 80 to 85 miles per hour. That would not be a shock to me. And then behind this, we get um, some cooler air to rush in with a slightly different system, but moving through the Great Lakes, it's going to bring some lake effect snowfall, um, but that's going to bring in some 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts as it moves on in as well into that region. In fact, let's kind of talk about that because that's bring, going to bring some decent snowfall potential when it combines with this low here, of course, the nor'easter. Um, so again, here we go. You can see that snowfall moving in from northwest to southeast here across the Great Lakes, um, really being enhanced there, especially by Lake Michigan. So places like Muskegon there in Michigan really going to get some quite hefty snowfall totals right in around you there. Um, so you can see again how the lakes just really enhance that snowfall in that region. Northern um, Indiana as well getting in on some of this. Notice some of the bands might even start off as some showers here on Monday morning, just some rain showers. But as we go throughout the day, that colder air rushing in, and you can see how this really kind of tightens on up and we get that colder push so if you're buffalo eastward around noon you're still getting rain but if you're west of buffalo that secondary system moving on in that's bringing those scattered heavier snow showers here some of these could even briefly be snow squalls lowering that visibility quickly and you know in the blink of an eye all of ohio really getting in on this nice snowfall and a brief heavy accumulation here through the afternoon hours on our monday some of that also moving into southeastern west virginia bringing some heavier totals there this will really be enhanced by lake erie into the evening hours and eventually we'll begin to see the snowfall kind of push its way on off towards the north and east as we go late Monday here and into our Tuesday. So let's play that out a little bit further. Notice that band of snowfall kind of progressing into parts of New York, parts of northern Vermont as well into our Tuesday morning. Um, and that stretches all the way back down towards the Philadelphia region as well. Maybe a brief flurry or two there in the morning hours at that point. So again, when it comes to precipitation, we're really not going to see everything quite clear out until we're done with our Tuesday. Now your snow totals here, let's kind of look at those. How much snow could you be seeing? Overall, this is just going to be kind of heavy at times, but not necessarily fully accumulate. But parts of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan getting a quick two to four inches with locally higher amounts. Some splotches here into parts of Michigan as well as northern Indiana picking up a couple of in inches of snow. Um, and then into to this area here in northern Appalachia as well as into parts of New York, the Adirondacks. A nice snowfall amount of again one to three inches in many communities coming right off Lake Erie as well as in parts of southeastern West Virginia. That's where we could see some of the highest totals out of this entire event with a brief maybe four to six inches of snowfall falling there but notice here we just can't get the snowfall east eastward enough to make it to the i-95 corridor so once again another big bust in the snowstorm department there closer to the coastline now let's talk about those ch chillier temp anomalies that are going to be settling on in behind this system anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees below where we should be for this time of the year over the southeastern as well as Ohio Valley part of the United States. Um, this is as we make our way just into our Tuesday. Warmer than average here over the western U.S. and the northern U.S. as we really continue to see the El Nino ridging develop in those zones. So look at some of these wind chills into our Tuesday morning here. kind of want to stop at around that 7 a.m. time frame, which is 12 Z, which is Zulu time. But anyway, some of these wind chills anywhere from around 5 to 15 here across the Great Lakes, Appalachia, the Ohio Valley. Even as far south as the Florida Panhandle, some freezing conditions possible at this point, all the way on over to the main shorelines as well. Really, most of the country below freezing to start, or at least in the feels like department, below freezing to start the start the day on your Tuesday. The, really, the East Coast continues to be impacted by that colder air into our Wednesday morning. Again, back down into the teens and 20s here over parts of those zones. And really, it's not discriminating on everyone, on anyone here. It's really just kind of a big mix of teens and 20s for everyone here. But we do begin to see a rebound in the temperature um, outlook here over parts of the central U.S. by the time we make our way towards the end of the week as um, southerly winds return there. And speaking of that, look at the ridging here that's going to bring the Climate Prediction Center's temp outlook that includes Chris 
Christmas right it's smack dab in the middle of it. Warmer than average air here over Minneana Minneapolis here. Minneapolis, wow. Um, anyway, Indianapolis, we've got Louisville, Nashville under this much warmer than average zone at this point. So unfortunately, your white Christmas chances are looking a little bit below average for this time of the year. I'm in these areas, but I kind of want to show you a couple things that could bring it up if we can get um, these to kind of come together here. Let's look at this. Could these western storms trend eastward? Look at what's moving into parts of California, um, Oregon, Seattle, Washington here over the next couple of days. You've got big systems running into the Sierra Nevada range there. Um, and, you know, the low pressure systems offshore here are going to be quite, um, you know, quite tight. We're going to see that spiral shape to them. Could these push on shore? Yes. And I think one of them will eventually kind of track through the four corners region into the plains. That's why that southerly flow begins to really increase towards the end of this week. If we can do that and have that happen, then we can get enough of a cold flow to maybe get some snowfall to try and work its way out over the northern plains. Um, but you can at least begin to see some precipitation trying to get going there in the southern plains in the way of rainfall there by our, the end of this week and into the Thursday, Friday time frame. But here's your Euro model ensemble snowfall depth. This is as we go towards the end of the day on Christmas. I think it's in terms of having snow on the ground at the start of the day, mostly only the Rockies and maybe near some of the Great Lakes seeing that as well as into parts of North Dakota. Could we see some snowfall fall during the day on Christmas into parts of the Northern Plains? Yes, if we can get a low pressure to kind of set up in the way I just drew on your screen. Um, so we'll have to monitor that. But really, some of these zones here are quite questionable for this time of the year with below average chances um, for snowfall to be on the ground in at least an inch for that white Christmas criteria there. Um, and northern uh, Michigan or northern Michigan parts of northern Minnesota as well. Just really looking through this Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region, below average chances for having snowfall on the ground this Christmas. Above average back into parts of, of the Four Corners as well as the Rockies. But look at this. You see some of those snowfall chances shift east by New Year's, if we can get that to happen earlier enough, then that could help us really get that snowfall. But it's just a little too early to tell, but it's just looking a little bit lower than average in that chance um, because of warmer than average temperatures. Um, but look at this. This is a chance for an inch of precipitation in 24 hours on Christmas, according to that European ensemble. We're already looking at a 20 to 30 percent chance here over the south central United States for some very heavy rainfall to be moving on in, and that could be associated with one of those low pressure systems that could be questionable for the snowfall. So we'll have to keep an eye on everything, but I hope I got you through this video um, without boring you too much. Please hit that subscribe button if you enjoy my content. Accurate, easy to understand, and passionate forecasting. Um, I know there's a lot of you who watch my videos and enjoy them who aren't necessarily subscribed, so it's just um, down below the video if you want to hit that button. Here are the credits, everyone.